oh no, we're not saying it doesn't exist, but it's not enough to stop people from reaching their goals. So that's the point of the show is like, hey, quit being a fucking bitch and get to work. Moments with Puzz, brought to you by Get Your Ass to Work, something that everyone can enjoy. Now on to the show. All right, welcome to the American Real Estate Professional Podcast. I'm the host, Dan Puzz. Today we've got a guest We have Corinne Lujan here from Keller Williams in Sparks, Nevada. And today we've got a topic that we hope is going to bring a lot of value to people and their fucking bitch ass excuses of why they cannot be successful in whatever they're taking on. Today we're talking to Corinne who at the age of 50 years old decided to make a complete change in career and go into real estate. Now, what I find so special about Corinne is not the fact that she was 50 years old, not the fact that she's Asian in a predominantly white town like Reno, Nevada, not the fact that she's a woman, but the fact that she has unrelenting drive to get the results that she's looking for. So today, when we, when we have this discussion we want to touch on some of these topics and these limiting beliefs that people feel about themselves, especially, you know, the world is too racist. I'll never make it. I'm too old to start something new. I'm a woman and this is a man, uh, man dominated profession and all the other bullshit that we tell ourselves that stops us from achieving our goals. So welcome to the show, Corinne. Thank you for having me, Daniel. All right. Well, we're we're glad to have you because your story is is really um, inspirational for anyone who's ever had any sort of fear about starting a new and it can be anything. It can be a new job, a relationship, what whatever it is that people really want to get done. They want to start a business. Um, they want to take up a new hobby. And, and they're just fearful of making that move. So why don't you start with kind of what you did before real estate and then what led you to wanting to go into a, a, a career where it's 100% commission, meaning you don't get paid unless you are successful and convince people to do business with you. Yep, yep. So I started my career uh, as a journalist, actually. Started that out of college, went to Berkeley and uh, was a print journalist, then did a little TV. And then from there, I transitioned into marketing and public relations, which I did for about 20 years, 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was a director of marketing for a national nonprofit and public relations. And then uh, I started real estate about three years ago. It was kind of a pretty easy transition. You know, real estate is all about marketing and Marketing yourself, marketing your clients' properties for sale, things like that. So right, and I love that you say that that it's an it was a pretty easy transition because most people don't have the experience that you have as far as it being easy. Real estate for most people is really fucking hard. It was very hard. Uh, Real estate is sales, and I always told myself my whole life is like, oh, I'm not a salesperson. I'm not good in sales. So. I didn't have that sales mentality, really. I had that, like you, a customer service marketing mentality, really. So, Corinne, tell us what the final straw was going from the the bullshit corporate world of having a boss that made you finally jump and say, I'm going to be my own boss. I'm going to take control of my own life and my finances and go into real estate. What was that? What was that moment, the defining moment? Really, you want to know the real moment? I had some coworkers uh, just kind of trying to sabotage my work. I think we've all kind of gone through this, and I thought, what the heck? I was I started doing real estate part time, and uh, after my second escrow closed, 
I said, forget it. I'm going to, I'm going to go out there and do this on my own. I'm so tired of corporate politics and office politics and gossip and drama and all of that. So it's been the best career move ever. I love it. So, I mean, real estate may not get you 100% drama free, as we all know, <laughs> no. but it does allow you that freedom to be and surround yourself with people who you want to be around and work your own hours and be your own boss for the most part, which for me getting into real estate, being my own boss meant I got to work as many fucking hours as I possibly could instead of, well, I'm going to take Thursday off. I'm going to go play golf Tuesday. It was finally... I'm not being constrained by a fucking time clock where I have to punch out exactly at eight hours or I get written up for having one minute of overtime. I mean, fuck that. Fuck that. So, so you go into real estate and you hustled. I mean, you really got out there and fucking hustled hard and talk a little bit about what it took for you, because there was a story you told me once about wanting to open house the day of your wedding, okay, or the, the <laughs> weekend, weekend of. of. My wedding. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and so you were very, very committed to doing the activities that lead people to be, to be successful. Why don't you go ahead and talk a little bit about what it took for you to start to gain traction in an industry that you were brand new at? Well, I found my niche in, in the first year of doing open houses every weekend, Saturday, Sunday, uh, you know, even with my, when I was still having a full-time job, that's what I would do on Saturday and Sundays. And then when I became a full-time realtor, I mean, I just cranked it up, uh, door knocking Thursdays and Fridays before the open house to invite the neighbors and things like that. So, um, and having an hosting open houses isn't just, you're not just waiting for the buyer of that house, right, to come walking through your door. It really taught me about how to talk about real estate as well to other people, what to say, what not to say, and just be comfortable in that, in being a realtor, really. So, and gave me some, a lot of confidence that way because people were asking me, they just assumed that I'm in that house hosting this open house. They assumed I knew what I was talking about, what I was doing. And that was pretty cool. So I loved doing that. Right. So yeah, when you're a real estate agent and you're doing an open house, people expect you to be the expert. They don't know if you're brand new or you've been (laughs) in the business for 40 years and they expect you to be the expert. And what I heard you say was, is you got your start by doing open houses while you were working a full-time job. That's, that's my exact story to a T as well. I was working a full-time job and then I would do as much as I could on my time off, which meant that there was no fucking time off for those of you who are thinking, oh, I can do real estate part-time and make hundreds of thousands of dollars. Well, you (laughs) might be able to. Chances are that's not going to fucking happen. Uh, You worked every weekend and you did those activities that people absolutely fucking refused to do. You went out and you door knocked You Mm -hmm. knocked on people's doors. You went door to door. You held open houses and you worked on your time off. And the best open houses were the ones where I didn't feel like going out and doing it. And I did it anyway. And it felt great afterwards. It's like when you don't feel like going to the gym, but you did it. It feels great, right? It feels great that you did it. So it just, I'd come out and go, I'm a realtor. God damn it. (laughs) So did you have resistance did you resist wanting to do those activities? Because I know I did. I know I did not want to go knock on anybody's door ever. I did not want to approach people who I didn't know and ask them to start doing business with me, but I had to. It, it was either, for me, it was either stay working at that shit buffet that I was I was managing or it was go knock those fucking doors and try to get try to get a sale. Did you have that resistance did you have those thoughts running through your head of like, oh man, I shouldn't be out here doing this or why am I, how did I get myself in this position? Well, you know, when, as a woman, okay, we're always, it's the safety issue for us as female realtors, whether you're door knocking by yourself or having an open house by yourself, even though, you know, it's, it's Reno, it's beautiful little, biggest little city, right? So I was never really scared. I was only scared once. Uh, but other than that, you know, that was the only resistance in my head sometimes, 
Uh, but you know, being, being, a, having been a reporter, you, you kind of know how to take care of yourself. Don't have your back to the door, be close to the door when you have somebody kind of creepy walking in ready. If you're ready to jump out the, out of the house, things like that. So a little bit of resistance sometimes in my head that way, but I've been lucky. So I would say that you're probably a, not just a little, but a lot less fearful than most people are to do those activities that we know lead to getting sales, which is door knocking, making cold calls. So you have less resistance. I had a really high wall of resistance to doing it. I fucking hate it. It just, it, it was so hard for me to go door knock every single day to get out of my car because I just hated knocking on strangers doors. It sounds like your resistance was a little bit lower, but no matter if, you're okay going out knocking on doors or you absolutely fucking hate it, you have to do your lead generation. Yeah, absolutely. It, it has to be done. And open houses are a form of lead generation. Big time, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did really well. Well, I think, I, and I've told you this before, also, Daniel, it's like I didn't know better in the first year. You, didn't, you don't know to be afraid. You don't know to, that's not what you're supposed to do or how you're supposed to do it. I just did it. So, like right. you, we just do it. Right. Someone told us this is what you do. You go do it. Right. It doesn't matter how you felt about it. You just go do the work. <laughs> I thought that's what I was supposed to do. No choice. So. Right. Okay. So talk about what you think were the negatives having that you're an older person. Okay. You started at 50 years old. You're female and you're Asian and you're, you're Filipino and you're from the Bay Area, so am I. But out here in Reno, Nevada, it's predominantly white. How much, much of that was it a factor to your success or how much do you think in your mind it held you back? First, the older part. Yeah, there were some, you know, when when much younger people would come into my open house or I would meet those kinds of buyers. But I've had buyers and clients of all ages, of all races, there have been times where I felt like it was a factor. They'd walk into the open house and it would be uncomfortable. I think every person of color knows what that feeling is. That doesn't have to be words to it. You just feel that. I mean, all our lives. I mean, I've grown up in white neighborhoods all my life, even uh, 45 years ago when my family came to this country, right? So we were in predominantly white neighborhoods all the time. So I was kind of used to it already. What is it? I am comfortable being uncomfortable. And I think that that helped me a lot. Um, sometimes it's like, shit, they're not going to do business with me. Because, and I would feel it. It's like, they're probably not, they don't want to do business with me because of X, Y, Z, whatever. So, okay, I get that. I move, just move on. There's, there's always somebody else. There is. I, if you dwell on it, and yeah, I mean, it, it sucks. It really does because it's like, hey, I'm a great agent. I could do this great work for you. But if you're going to resist me that way, man, I'm not going to spend and I'm not going to waste enough any, 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 any energy on trying to convince you if, if you don't want to be, if you don't want to work with me, that's fine. So your, your, your whole deal is, is, you know, you're going to run into people who are not going to want to do business with you for one reason or another. For one reason or another. Right? And, and for me, when I started, I felt, and this was in my head or, and it could have been real at some times because I knew that because of my age and the way I looked, I looked very young. And when you're the third realtor into a house and the people leaving are all veterans who are like 45, 50, 60 years old, mm -hmm. and you can tell have a ton of experience. And when they see this younger kid walking up and you can see the disappointment on their face, like, oh, great, we're going to have to sit through some bullshit from this kid. I mean... Part of that could have been in my head, and it also really could have stopped me from getting many of the deals, especially when I was brand new, without a track record to back it up. And and so those were the thoughts that I had to struggle through, and the solution was always to just keep going. That's right. Absolutely. Don't quit. Find people who are willing to work with you. That's right. So talking about the part about, you know, you don't maybe look the part or you don't feel the part. I mean, what is your take on it 
as a whole in in real estate do you think that there are problems in reno or you know just around the world that are going to stop anybody from hitting their goals in real estate if they put enough time and effort into it of course i know i have some friends in this industry not necessarily they're agents they're in in work in escrow and uh, or lending and where they feel they they've told me it's like I, I know that I didn't get this client because of racism or what I look like or whatever because they were much nicer to the blonde uh, escrow officer or the, the blonde agent I get that of course but it's like what have you told me it's like all right Count to 10, 10 seconds there, get over it, move on to the next one. And that's what we have to do. That's what we have to do. Uh, if we dwell on it, I mean, yeah, it sucks. Um, uh, but if we dwell on it, let us get us down and stop us from doing the next deal or getting after the next 10 deals, then I think we just have ourselves to blame. All of these issues are definitely real. Don't get me wrong, please. I've been in the trenches fighting it myself numerous times. I just love the fact that the best revenge is to be successful. And so I'm, I'm really trying not to lead you down the interview path that <laughs> I believe the world is. I, I really want to hear your take on it because I've always been under the assumption that doing business and being a business person is is the the equalizer in the world and i truly believe that if you are good enough in the marketplace the marketplace will accept you no matter what you look like no matter you know what gender you are gay straight you know it doesn't matter if your services and your mind is in the right place people will do business with you and I will agree with you on that, Daniel. Um, Maybe not everyone, a- and you're gonna get fe- you're gonna get pushback. We're not saying that there are not problems out in the world that that don't exist. We're not saying that. But if you keep pushing, and you keep getting better, and you keep improving yourself, and you keep going, you're gonna have people that are gonna do business with you. And at some point, a lot of people aren't gonna give a shit what you look like or, you know, who you sleep with at night, as long as you get the job done for them. Absolutely. Yeah. In the best possible way. Absolutely. Sometimes I turn what my, what people think can be a disadvantage into an advantage. Like, uh, I throw people off kilter right off the bat because when I, when I don't speak with an accent, (laughs) Right away, they're like, oh, your English is so good. And we're buds from then on. And I'll text you, right? And I'll go, I love it when rednecks love me. So, it, it, it's <laughs> <laughs> well, because, because it's like, isn't it fun that when we get over each other's hangups and uh, we just do the deal and make you happy, I do my job, you're happy with your house, new house, sold house, whatever. And, um, you know, it's, it's, we have both overcome our prejudices when I have clients like that. Now, remember I had that one client and actually, and then here's the funny part, the most blatant racism that I had experienced in Reno was from a fellow, uh, another Asian, uh, Asian clients. Uh, I remember this story. This was this one actually pissed me off more than any other experience because it shouldn't be so. I went out there. It was a signed call of one of your listings. They called you. They wanted to see the house. You sent me out there. I was your buyer's agent, uh, Asian couple who barely spoke English, okay, from Orange County, Southern California. Uh, and they said, li- they literally said to me, I showed them the house. Would you, I said, would you like another, to see another house? We want white realtor. Wow, really? And, it, and even before that, they said, you know, they wanted a, a tax accountant because it, would I recommend one in, in, in Reno because they wanted to set up a business? I said, yes, I, I would love to recommend a great accountant for you because is the same look like you? Excuse me? So I knew where they were going, but I wanted to hear it from them. And then they finally said, we want white realtor. I said, 
I can get on that for you. And I'm, I'm thinking, I'm going to get a referral. <laughs> <laughs> And then I got mad, but my first thing is like, I'm going to get a referral then. Like, great. I don't have to show these buyers around. I'm just going to get a referral. But yeah, that's all fun and jokes aside. I mean, it's, it's also very real within the Asian culture. There's lots of Asian groups. We can be just as racist with each other as any other group. Right. So, right. And, and that's interesting um, that you met with some other Asian clients and they yeah. specifically told you that they wanted a certain race of a realtor. They're given <laughs> that their lang- you know their language skills were a little limited. Uh, yeah, they just very simple words, right? We want white realtor. Terrific. Yeah, so there's a, um, a local uh, business guy here in town. The inspiration for this podcast came about because I go into this certain business here in Reno and one of the guys who's very, very cool, very nice, and I've known him for years, he's a black guy. And he also told me, um, he was telling me just over the years, his ambitions and what he wants to do and how he wants to get promoted and move up in his company. He's doing very well, very smart guy. He, he came and he started complaining to me on on one day saying that he's not getting promoted and he went down this whole list of reasons why he wasn't getting a promotion. And he was saying, you know, hey, you know, I'm bisexual. They know that. I'm from from this different area of of the country. You know, I'm, I'm black. There's not a lot of people you know, I'm the only black guy in this position in the whole state of Nevada. And so he had all these excuses and, you know, this is a really smart guy. And I, I just, I told him, I said, look, dude, I said, no one gives a fuck. Like if you're good and, and you're really going to be that good in the way you treat me, which is like gold every single time I come in, just keep doing what you're doing. You're going to get your promotion. They're not going to over they're they're not going to overlook you forever. And then probably no more than a month or two after that I get a text message from the guy saying, "Hey man, you're right. I got a promotion." Now look, you know, that's that's that golden goose story, right? It doesn't always work out like that. There's a lot of problems, but I think the the inspiration for this podcast was is, is put your bullshit aside. It's you know, get out there and do the fucking work and, and don't let your own thoughts stop you. You don't know why someone may or may not want to do business with you for, for any reason, unless they come out and tell you. So, (laughs) so quit making shit up in your head of things you can't do. I can't learn a new language. I can't start a new career. I can't do this and learn that or go back to school. I'm too old to go back to school. And so the reason why we had you on this podcast, Corinne, today is because your story's awesome. You came from California out here to Reno. You blew the doors off of the real estate, uh, off the real estate industry, winning rookie of the year at at Keller Williams. And then you absolutely crushed it your second year. You did, I think, twice as good as I did in my second year. And so... Because I had you. Yeah. You didn't have you your first year. Yeah, so. well, that's, that's partially true, but you also put in the work. You also put in the hustle and the grind, and, and that's the important part of, of making it in this industry is doing the shit that you don't want to do that you know needs to be done and, and not making excuses for why you're coming up short or why you're failing. Well, I'll tell you what. Being a minority woman, I don't feel entitled to anything, and I think that helps me with the hustle. Um, the word promotion, I got Why? Because at the, work. the entitlement doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. There, not for nobody's me Nobody's entitled to shit. No. Ever. No, no. I'm not entitled to leads. I'm not entitled to referrals. Nothing. And, um, yeah, just again, that word promotion is like, I don't ever have to wait for a promotion. I can go get it and hustle it myself. And that's what I love about real estate. So. Yeah. And on a, On to wrap this up, I think that's why a lot of us get into real estate is is to not have to wait around for that promotion or that pay raise that you can, we are blessed to be in an industry where you can create it on your own 
and you can go out into the world and work as much or as little as you want to, and you're rewarded for it, and you're compensated in a way that is real. There is no fucking entitlement in the business world, in the real open market, not in the fake corporate bullshit world, (laughs) but in the real world, the open market, you're going to be entitled to what you worked for and, and not a dime more. All right, guys, thank you for listening to this podcast. Hopefully you made it this far. And all we ask is that if you did listen to the podcast, you found any value, give us a rating on iTunes. If it sucked, you can tell me to go fuck myself. It won't hurt my feelings. It'll help us get better as a podcast, talk about topics that are actually important in the world. And as we always say on this podcast, Get your ass back to work.